Hi everyone, it's me Danny, and I'm back today with another painting tutorial. So this is a sketch that I did in the fall, just two or three months ago in Potsdam, Germany. And unfortunately it got a bit too dark for me to paint the rest of the sketch and to paint all of the trees. So today, I thought I would show you how I go about painting fall colors using layers and a wet on dry technique and finish the sketch on video so you can sort of see a bit of my process. So to start off, I basically want to determine what base tone I should use for each of these trees or bushes. And I'm going to do a wet on dry technique, which means I'm going to paint a layer, let it dry, and then do a second layer. And this is really important if you want to get this sort of contrast in your watercolors, because if you don't let your washes dry in between, they'll all sort of mix together and they won't have that depth that you have and that contrast. So I've got my supplies. In this case, I also have a bit of toilet paper. You can also use some tissue or a towel or a rag, but this is just also important so that I can get some of that extra moisture off of my paintbrush. So in this case, I'm just going to take a base green. This is sap green, if you're wondering. And I'm adding a bit of yellow. And maybe a bit of blue. So now that I've got a base tone, I'm simply going to add it to this little area of my sketch. And then as I said, I'm just going to let it dry. So in terms of consistency, this is more of a milky consistency. You don't want to be too wet with your first wash because it'll be very clear, very translucent, sort of like, you know, a sky, which is fine for elements like skies or water. But for trees and foliage, they're really almost the darkest parts of our subject matter. So really pay attention to your consistency and think of having like a milky consistency when you're doing your watercolor wash. Now I'm going to make sure that my washes don't interact too much with each other. So I'm going to go to a different spot on the page and basically using my base green, I'm going to fill in another area. You know, and working strategically is really important when doing this sort of stuff because I don't want to be on location and wait, you know, an hour or so for my sketch to dry. So while something here is dry or while something here is getting dry, I'll just go to a different spot of the sketch and I'll fill it in. So once again, you know, just going here and filling in that area that I've already designated with my inking. Now I can go back here and I have my base green, but I want to give, you know, this sense of fall. So I'm going to mix a lot more yellow and get a nice golden yellow color for this tree here. I might even add a tiny bit of sepia or brown. And then I can just go ahead and layer this on top. Okay, so you can see why using a mix of colors rather than taking them directly out of the pans is also quite important because in this way, I have a lot of variation and I get a lot of these natural tones, which I wouldn't get if I were taking the color directly out of the paint pan. So always make sure you're mixing and not taking too much of your pigments directly from the pans. That'll really give you a more natural look with your sketches. And I'm just going to clean my brush and work my way around the unpainted areas. And especially here in these trees in the background, don't want to get too dark because we want to have a sense of depth 
So we're not gonna do a lot of layers here. So really paying attention to the foreground, background, how many layers we're having in which areas or what part of the sketches. Alright, so now I basically have my base layer done in all of these areas. So to recap, what I did was basically do one sort of milky wash in each area. Even on location, if I have a lot of the same colors, I will vary it up on purpose just so I have this extra contrast. So that means looking and saying, can I add a bit more green, add a bit more yellow, just to exaggerate the saturation. So for the second layer, I need to decide where my light is coming from, and that's a really important aspect uh, in any sketch. And in this case, I've already determined with the building that the light is coming from the left-hand side, which means my shadows are going to be on the right-hand side. And what I like to do is what I call the rule of three. So three washes where I really have my light tones, mid-tones, and then dark tones. And you can see that here on this sketch a little bit where I've really used two to maybe three different tonal values. And this also applies to architecture, by the way. But to divvy up my sketch or to divide my subject matter into light, middle, and dark. So in this case, I'm going to go back to my trees and simply add a mid-tone. I'm not going to color everything in, but I'm going to sort of start the shadows, let that dry, and then I'll add a third wash where it's really, really dark. So in this case, we wanna make sure that our mixture is not too watery, otherwise we're going to sort of loosen up the first wash we did, and that could be a bit problematic. So make sure you're also remaining in a sort of milky consistency. And you don't have to worry about getting the second tone exactly the way your first tone is. I sort of mix it up a little bit, but I don't want something green where I have a yellow base tone and something yellow where I have a green base tone. So I'll just go in here and sort of with a wavy format, I guess you could say, I'll add the second layer. And you can already see how I'm starting to get this depth that, you know, I really need for the shadows. And it's in a very controlled manner. So I always like to control my watercolors as uh, best as possible. It's easier said than done, but by layering, by working wet on dry, you can really control your watercolors in a way that, you know, you can't do if you're doing lots of wet on wet, which, you know, is also fine, but you should just be aware of your limitations when painting wet on wet. So in this case, also going back in, getting a bit of a brown tone. Here I might have a few squiggles. I don't want to do it too much like polka dots, but at the same time I don't want to be too geometrical with the second layer. And as you can see, I'm also just going sort of back into this wash. All right, and now I basically have my second layer done. And as you can see, I've really paid attention to where my light is coming from. So now I'm just going to look and see where I can add the darkest tonal values. And I'm going to do so by adding a third layer in certain areas of these trees. But I'm going to make sure that my mid-tones, so my second layer, is not covered up too much. Because if we do that, then you're just going to have light and dark. And you're not going to have this golden middle tone in between, which is really what's going to lend us a lot of depth. So when it comes to these colorful orange and yellow trees, you can use a lot more brown when creating your dark tonal values. And when it comes to the green areas, I'm using a bit more blue and brown.
All right, so now I have my three layers done in these trees that are in the foreground. And I'll hold this up a bit closer to the camera so you can see what I've been doing. Now the sketch is not completely finished because now I can do some of the shading or the shadows on the grass. And I have a few leaves here too, which I still want to paint. All right, so there you have it, my three-step approach to sketching fall foliage and fall colors. I'll probably go ahead and add a little bit of text here in the lower right-hand corner as I've done on this side. Otherwise, you can see pretty clearly how I went about doing the fall and autumn foliage in this case by adding a base layer, then doing my mid-tones and then my dark tones in certain areas. So I look forward to hearing from you in the comments below and hope you found this video helpful.